Or I can't say anything. Can you? <laughs> no. Anybody? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And that's how they're supposed to be. You should not be able to see anything through the glasses. Thank you for joining us as we prepare for the great American eclipse. Clouds are expected to continue limiting our visibility, but that won't stop us from having a lot of fun and enjoying a once in a lifetime event uh, for those that are able to tune in or that are tuning into our special two hour special. It's a long time and we have a <laughs> lot in store. We're asking the experts about this astronomical event. We're catching up with eclipse chasers and we're testing our own knowledge. We will be buzzing in with trivia answers. With a Jeopardy expert too. That's right. Oh, yeah, I know. No. I guess we call them expert. Yeah. Some yeah. of our youngest yeah, glasses. Yeah. Okay. Some of our, our youngest learners are also getting in on the action. Local students sent us several questions about this historic moment and we'll provide those answers on air. Yes, but we do want to get a check of our eclipse forecast. And as we've been talking about really since early last week, we were expecting mostly cloudy skies here, and that has definitely been the case. Looking at satellite, uh, those up into Texas, North Texas, are looking at maybe a slightly better chance. They're getting in on some increase in cloud cover, but it looks like around the Dallas area, maybe not as bad, nor is it as bad across much of Arkansas. Certainly more breaks in the clouds where we have more of the um, uh, you know, better visibility, better viewing is up toward the Ohio Valley and then into uh, the Northeast, just outside of our map here. So the good news is it does look like a lot of the within path of totality will have a decent shot of it, not really in South Texas, but for Southeast Louisiana, unfortunately, it is not looking great. We also have some scattered showers around, a few thunderstorms, and that is just helping to add to our cloud cover. So not looking great. All we can hope for over the next couple of hours is to get a few breaks here in the sky, because at the moment, not looking too optimistic. Alexandra. As we mentioned, the clouds aren't standing in the way of special events happening around town. That's right. The Children's Museum of St. Tammany has a whole day planned for the great American eclipse. Our Meg Ferris joins us live from Mandeville. Meg, how's it looking out there? Well, it is cloudy, and um, photojournalist Adam Copas and I on the way over here on the causeway, we did have a few little sprinkles, but every now and then the sun, you can see the sun. So we'll just have to wait until that um, main part of it around 148 happens. But as you mentioned, I am here at the Children's Museum of St. Tammany. We're in Mandeville, and there's lots of activities going on. I want you to look behind me. So the children are here. It's usually not open on Monday, but it is today. And what they're doing is they're taking their glasses because they have glasses here. They have about 50 pair left. And look what Aurora made for me. You color the crown, and then you tape that to your glasses so you have the glasses and a crown and Aurora asked me what my favorite colors were purple and like indigo blue she made me this beautiful eclipse crown and glasses so I'm gonna be wearing those when we go outside but um, lots of children here learning about it they have the NASA channel on waiting for it and what's so interesting is these activities are sanctioned by NASA and I want to come over and talk to Julie because uh, Julie Mendez is the uh, you're the, the director here of programming and you really have been working with NASA for for a long time to get all this coordinate. Correct. So we've been planning for about the past year. We participated in the annual eclipse in October, and then we've been meeting with them almost monthly on webinars to gather information. They share activities. We also have activities from the, it's called NISNET, which is a national informal STEM education network. And so they provided some of the activities here. We have a partnership with NASA called NASA Astro Camp Community Partners, and so we actually run their NASA Astro Camp here in the museum over the summer. What do you learn at, or what can children learn, and can they still sign up? So, yes, they can sign up for camp. NASA Astro Camp is for um, ages second grade through fifth graders, and then we do have a camp for younger kids. But during the NASA Astro Camp, we get all of the materials from NASA, and so um, they are learning about space challenges, STEM education, um, they'll get some free play in the museum, so there's lots going on. 
I, I, that makes perfect sense. I, the reason I fell in love with science were watching the astronauts land on the moon. And, and it, it made you want to learn all that. And, and you're right, things like this can inspire children. Yes, so we try to get them hands on and we are trying to spark their interest in STEM. So if we can develop these fun activities that are getting them learning, they don't even know they're learning. They're, they think they're playing and having fun, but they're learning lots of things through the process. So what are some of the things, I know we're looking at the colors and the crowns being colored and the glasses, but what else are, did NASA tell you to do? I see a little boy over there we just showed that has the corona sticking out from the moon's shadow. What else are, are, did NASA have in the arts and crafts division? Okay, so yeah, as you mentioned, they can make a chalk art of the corona. Um, at the next table, we've got some pinhole projectors. So if you don't have a safe way to view the eclipse, you can make a pinhole projector by just poking a hole. If you don't have this activity at home, you can do it in an index card and you can use the, um, reflect the shadow on the ground so you're not looking up directly at the sun. Okay, well, Julie, we'll be back with you. We'll be showing y'all more and more things and I hope we're gonna get outside to actually use our glasses that they have here at the Children's Museum in St. Tammany. And now, Chris, make the clouds go away. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> I'm working on it, but I like that little guy that was putting the suns over his eyes. That's exactly something I would have done. I don't know if you saw him, Meg, behind you. <laughs> it was hysterical. Oh, you gotta love kids, because they're gonna ask some of the best questions, and we are answering some of those ecl eclipse questions from some of our local students. The first question comes from Lake Forest Charter School. Let's hear it. My name is Denim Jones. I'm in sixth grade at Lake Forest Charter School. My question is, if galaxies rotate, why do they look stationary? That's a good question. Denim Jones asking why, uh, if galaxies rotate, do they look stationary? Uh, that's a good question. And uh, we were actually looking at some of these questions last night. I, I'm thinking what she's referring to is, is looking off in, in you know, the Hubble Space Telescope and looking off in the distance. Scientists have ways of seeing motion that may not necessarily be something you can see with visible light. They have various instruments that are allowing them to see what can rotate. I mean, they understand that our solar system, the, or our galaxy, the Milky Way, actually rotates, although we're in the middle of it. So they have very complicated ways. That's more of a question for definitely an astronomer as to why it looks like they are stationary. But definitely there is an appearance of some movement based on some of the tools that the satellites actually have. The satellites and then the new James Webb satellite actually gives us a much clearer picture of what is out in the universe. All right, Samuel Foreman wants to know, what phase is the sun in during a solar eclipse? My name is Samuel Foreman. I'm a sixth grader at Lake Forest Charter School. And my question is, what phase is the moon in during a solar eclipse? Okay, so that was that was actually a fantastic question. It is a new moon, meaning you cannot see the moon because the way the Earth, Sun, and Moon are all aligned, the Earth's shadow, or not the Earth's shadow, but the uh, we are now looking at kind of the darkened part of the moon when there is a solar eclipse. So the phase of the moon right now today is a new moon. You can only get a solar eclipse during a new moon. All right, that question, uh, we got another question. Let's hear this one. How does the solar eclipse differ from other astronomical phenomena? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, different astronomical phenomena that uh, come from Deshaun Joseph, a student at Orleans Charter Science and Math. These are all great questions, and I'll tell you what, I was looking at these last night, some of them I had to go, uh, what does the old Google know? Uh, it differs. I would say it maybe is a little bit more interesting as uh, compared to so many other phenomena in the solar system, in the galaxy, the universe, in that it's all pretty much in our backyard as far as the size of the universe goes. There are many different things. You can see the transit of Venus when Venus actually passes across the sun. Uh, there's an alignment of planets that you can kind of see in the night sky sometime. But I think what is really cool about uh, both solar and lunar eclipses is that they're so close to Earth. Uh, that it, it, it's kind of a little bit more exciting because these are uh, things that are happening so very, very close to us. And it's not something that you even need a satellite to see. You can see it with the uh, naked eyes, although again, use the protection for the uh, solar eclipse. Peter Hamilton wants to know, does every black hole have the same size singularity? 
Hey, I'm Peter Hamilton. I'm in the sixth grade and I'm from Lake Forest Charter School. My question is, does every black hole have the same size singularity? Where's Itai? Does he know this? Where's our Jeopardy champion? Does he know this one? I'll be honest, uh, as far as meteorology goes, we didn't look that far into the sky, so I'm a little, uh, I'm, not as, I'm not as on with my uh, black hole science. That was really putting me on the spot. All right, all right, our final question comes from Andy Tron. Hi, my name's Andy Tran. I'm from sixth grade and I go to Wake Forest Charter School. My question is that what do galaxies orbit? That's a really good question. Ladies, do y'all know what galaxies orbit? Um, there is, I, oh. Do we know what they orbit? Well, actually, the, the Alexa and Alexandra are actually orbiting the studio right now, yeah, getting yeah, into yeah. position. I looked it up. I, I couldn't get a clear answer. I think like, uh, yeah. like we have satellite galaxies that order, orbit our galaxy or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they do orbit kind of like the center of the mass, it kind mm -hmm. of seemed, right? So that's yeah. kind of what I came up yeah, with. It's not, it wasn't like a, a center of the universe at all. I mean, there are billions upon billions of galaxies, and it seems like there may be bunches that orbit kind of uh, uh, some kind of center point. So um, uh, with that being said, let's go over to Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> These are some really good questions. Great definitely, questions. I know. Fantastic like, questions. Definitely for I'm an not smart enough. Yeah, me neither. I, I had to look them up. We, we need. We need Google. Yeah, we definitely or need to Alexa. talk to an astrophysicist. We need which, an Alexa. Uh, yeah, you, de you definitely need an Alexa. Uh, not this Alexa, but a definitely a different Alexa. I can call my friend from high school. Her name's Alexa Siri. Now she could answer the question. She's got two of the names. We're going to be talking to an astrophysicist soon, and nearly 13 million Texas. Texans are in the path of totality. So UNO astrophysicist Dr. Greg Schaub plans to witness the eclipse from Dallas. We're checking in with him now. Dr. Sieb, rather, actually. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Dr. You. Sieb. What's it like in Dallas right now? Well, we're getting some breaks in the clouds and being able to see the sun and we see the eclipse start. Yay! <laughs> and uh, so I've got high hopes of being able to track it reasonably well. Uh, and may even get to see the solar corona when we reach totality. Wow, that is really amazing. Now, you have a very impressive background. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at uh, UNO? Um, well, I'm in the physics department, and uh, my degree is uh, says physics on it, although it's actually an astrophysics, because astrophysics is the physics of the stars and the, the sky and all of that. Um, and so I uh, taught a lot of classes in Texas, including astronomy, and teaching and senior slash graduate level course in introductory astrophysics. Just a lot of fun. My students are great. They won't let me get away with anything. <laughs> they, they make sure that what I do is right and consistent, and I, I just love it. And I'm going to miss it when I retire. That is so awesome. So I was wondering, why do you think that this particular eclipse is rare? Because people say, okay, no, it isn't rare. Yes, it is rare. What do you think makes this eclipse so rare? Uh, by the way, I could uh, actually answer those two previous questions you had. <laughs> Please do. Please don't make us look. We look bad. Please answer them, and then we'll steal your answers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, sure, but if you want to know the, about the eclipse first, yes. um, you get eclipses uh, often two or three times a year, it's just not here and not total. Um, and so that is a, rip, a pretty rare thing, um, even to have them within writing range like this is. And I've made a trek up to the relative's house in uh, uh, outside of Dallas, so that I can have at least a shot at watching the kids. Um, so there, there's lots of solar eclipses that come across and somewhere in some uh, very distant part of the Earth, like Australia or Antarctica or you know India, and uh, just having one within the range of where you are that is a total solar eclipse. 
Now you said you were able to um, answer some of those other questions. You heard them about the black holes and the singularity. Was that mm -hmm. something you said you could answer? <laughs> please tell us whatever so, you know. <laughs> Keep it simple, okay. please. Well, the singularity, the size of the singularity of a black hole, we don't know because it's inside the event horizon of the black hole, and nothing can escape from a black hole and not even light. We don't know what happens inside the event horizon of a black hole. It's you know it, it's covered up. Uh, so you know, is everything in track to an actual zero size, or is there some minimal size, or does it depend on the mass? Is the answer is a definite. We don't know. Which makes it a very good question. Now, I know you probably get this question a lot, and I saw some of the students asked, do you think that there's life outside of, uh, of our galaxies or in, in, the, in space? What do you think about that? I like to quote from Carl Sagan and also in the movie Contact that if there isn't, it sure is a big waste of space. <laughs> so I, I actually believe that there's life out there. It seems like such a natural process that it might happen anywhere. I do not, on the other hand, uh, believe that UFOs are alien visitors. Because that just makes no sense whatsoever. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you have a great view of the eclipse. It was really nice to meet you. We are going to be taking a quick break. Make sure you stay tuned. We have a lot more coverage coming up in just a few moments. Moving on. On April 8, 2024, a total solar eclipse will have millions of people across North America in all of what's to come. That path of totality is going to enter into western Mexico and move across the United States into Canada, passing through Texas all the way through into Maine. Here in New Orleans, we will see a partial eclipse with 80% coverage of the sun. So, of course, what is a solar eclipse? You probably remember back to elementary school days. It's when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, either blocking it completely or partially. And there are four different types. There's the total solar eclipse, annular, partial, and a hybrid of both total and annular. So if you're in that path of totality, that is definitely something special. You'll see something there that you won't see out of the path of totality. So if you're in that path of totality, you'll see the sun's corona, which is the sun's outer atmosphere. It's usually blocked because the sun's surface is so bright and this photo is back from 2017 during that total eclipse because as the moon blocks the sun's surface, you can see that outer atmosphere and it is truly a sight to see. It is going to be beautiful. It's, if you're in that path of totality, of course, you can view it safely. You'll be able to see these very intricate, flowy kind of lines, also known as streamers and loops coming out of the corona, only if you're in that path of totality. But here in New Orleans, even though we won't be in that path, we'll still see 80% coverage. So here's a rough idea of what it's going to look like, and it's going to look spectacular. So the partial eclipse begins around 1229 in the afternoon, 1229 p.m. on April 8th. That's when first contact happens, when the moon just touches the surface, the exterior surface of the sun. And then at 149 p.m., in the afternoon, this is roughly what it will look like here in New Orleans. Not bad, 80% coverage, we're almost there, so it's gonna look amazing. And then as it departs from the sun's surface, the partial eclipse will end at 3.09 in the afternoon. So the full experience from start to finish will be lasting two hours and 39 minutes. Of course, the maximum eclipse much shorter, happening at 1.49 in the afternoon. So here in New Orleans, we will see a partial eclipse with 80% coverage. And if you're wondering when the next eclipse is here in the United States, it's not gonna be until 2045 when it goes from coast to coast. And New Orleans will actually be even closer to the path of totality with 90% coverage of the sun here. And Jackson, Mississippi will be in the path of totality then.
All right, and this is also an exciting time for local astronomers. We're joined now in our studio live with David Williams from the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society. And David, by the way, was kind enough to bring us these glasses that you see us wearing, along with a lot of other supplies for the eclipse. So thank you for that. And tell us, first of all, about the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society. Some people may not realize that we have this society in the New Orleans area. Yes, the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society has been around since 1959. Hmm. And uh, I've been a member for many years, a former president. And right now we have probably around 100 or so members. Cool. And we have meetings uh, once a month. Yeah, and you guys have had some events. I remember mm -hmm. going to a few in the past where you set up a big telescope or, you know, at different events, you'll do different kind of things for right. the community too. Yeah. Right. Very cool. And so David was actually there in Nashville, I think. Were you there? Yes. For, in Nashville for the 2017 eclipse. And he, you know, a lot of us haven't actually seen totality. It's all about totality, even though we have the partial eclipse, which should be pretty cool. Uh, it would be so spectacular to be in the path. So my question is, you've been in that path where it's 100% obscuration. How mm -hmm. dark does it actually get? What did you think? At maximum, it's probably around like twilight. Mm -hmm. Because even though the, 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 the sun is blocked by the moon, there's, there's still a glow, the corona, and, and, and it's it lights up the sky, but what's interesting is that the sky is dark and then maybe around 10 degrees above the horizon, it, it's like, like twilight sky, but then it gets darker the further up you go. Oh, interesting. Did you and see some stars? Yes. We had the star Regulus was very close wow. to, the, uh, to, the, to the eclipse of the moon and sun. And, yeah. um, and so, yeah, the stars do come out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it gets dark, and then the temperature does go down. Sometimes there's a little breeze blowing, mm -hmm. and and, um, and and it's just a spectacular event. It's something that I have never seen before, and, and it's something that you remember the rest of your life. Oh yeah, and then I've heard also that you know crickets can come out. Everything kind of turns to nighttime just All for right. a couple minutes and then it's back to the full sunlight. Yeah. And interesting, uh, so we have had a couple of other questions. Some people have asked, uh, how does it affect weather on Earth? And you just said it, it can knock the temperature down, yes. especially in totality in kind of a noticeable way. Even here with our partial eclipse in 2017, the temperature went down two or three degrees briefly, um, just because right. so much of the sun was blocked. And then it can also change wind a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Right. Uh, it's not really long lasting effects, but that does seem to be most of the weather effects that it has on Earth. Does the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society have anything coming up? Uh, well, there is a meeting on April 17th okay. at the East Bank Regional Library. Uh-huh. And, um, and that's the only event I know uh, at this moment. Okay, cool. But, you know, we do have outreach events every so often. Yeah, I remember seeing some pretty cool stuff yes. um, at the Kenner Rivertown Planetarium several years yes. ago. There was a big telescope set up. I was looking at, I forget what it was, something cool that was some right. planetary kind of thing. Right. Um, yes, and so actually, since you're almost finished with our interview in the studio, hopefully you could go out and see, maybe try to catch a glimpse of the eclipse Maybe, right yeah. maybe. Because <laughs> during the total eclipse in Nashville, there was a clear sky up until uh, there was two minutes of uh, maximum mm -hmm. uh, darkness when a cloud rolled in and knocked out a, a whole minute of the eclipse. Oh, okay. One cloud. Wow, that's enough to do it. And unfortunately <laughs> today we have a bunch of clouds, so right. we will see. But you and I were talking on the phone earlier saying hopefully there will be a break, even maybe just with some right. cirrus clouds. You know, you were pointing out that it can, you can see it through those high cirrus clouds sometimes, so right. we just need a little bit of luck, I think, heading into this afternoon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> David Williams with the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society, thanks so much for being here. You will. Appreciate it. And now I believe we're going to go over to Alexa. Yes, thanks, Alexandra. Now, we're also talking about safety. While the skies are pretty cloudy here in the New Orleans metro area, that isn't the case everywhere. So if you are heading somewhere with better visibility, protecting your eyes should be top priority. But if you're having trouble getting your hands on those special solar eclipse glasses, here is an alternative. Solar eclipses have inspired people for hundreds of years and will continue to on April 8th. In the past, observing eclipses helped us discover the element helium and prove Einstein's theory of general relativity. So how can we check out this awesome show without hurting our eyes? Well, there are many ways to check it out safely, like specially approved solar eclipse glasses. If you do happen to have ones left over from 2017, they are still good to use as long as they're not damaged. And of course, regular sunglasses will not cut it. You will also need special lenses and filters to be able to see it safely through a camera, telescope, 
telescope or binoculars. If you don't have official eclipse glasses or those lenses and filters for your devices, another way to check it out is to find a tree and look down at the ground. With your back to the sun, look at the shadow of the leaves from the tree. You'll be able to see the crescent shape when the partial eclipse is happening. You can also do the same thing with a kitchen utensil with holes in it, like a colander. The sunlight will pass through the holes and you can see the partial eclipse while looking at the ground. If you want to get really creative, you can make a pinhole projector at home. First, you need a cardboard box like a cereal box or a shoe box. Then you need aluminum foil, a pencil, scissors, tape, a pushpin, and a white piece of paper big enough to cover the end of the box. Trace one end of the box onto the white paper. Cut it out, then place it into the same side of the box. Then cut two square holes on the opposite end of the box. Tape the middle if using a cereal box. Cover one of the square holes with aluminum foil. Tape the foil in place and use a pushpin to make a very small hole in the center of the aluminum. To use that projector, stand with your back to the sun, then hold the large square opening up to your eye and look around until you see the sun projected on your white paper inside the box. The sunlight will shine through the tiny pinhole and cast a fantastic image on the white paper in the box. There are many other ways to check out the solar eclipse. Remember, do not ever look directly at the sun no matter what because you can do permanent damage to your eyes. We really want to make sure, first of all, of course, that we're accurate. That is huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Um, and of course, we want to get the information to viewers in a way that's really clear and understandable and in a way that can really help you decide what to do. What we do here as a team at WWL, we try to make sense of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, stay safe or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of severe storms, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in Southeast Louisiana being hurricanes. And so I try and quell those fears by answering all of the questions that the public may have about these events. The, you know, there's, there's no way to avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and put folks' mind at ease, I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every single day is knowing people are safe and they know exactly what to do when the weather strikes. It's all on the WWL-TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL-TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL-TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL-TV app. While most of us look forward to the solar eclipse with excitement, some regard the celestial event as a bad omen. The solar eclipse has been the subject of various myths and superstitions. Meteorologist Christina San Juan reassures us there is no need to be concerned. Here's a widely popular myth that's still circulating to this day. Pregnant women should not go outside during a solar eclipse because of a special radiation produced that would harm the unborn child, leading to physical deformities, cleft lip, and birthmarks. Now beyond the solar rays allegedly affecting expecting mothers, some believe it will also poison or contaminate your food, saying you must fast during an eclipse because any food cooked or eaten during an eclipse will be contaminated or poisonous. But as we now know, the rays emitted during an eclipse are not different from any other day. Just be sure to wear proper eye protection. Now let's talk about birthdays. Is yours April 8th or October 8th? A solar eclipse on your birthday or six months after has been believed to be a sign of impending bad health. But don't worry, there's no science to back this up. The science we do have now allows us to know what causes an eclipse, and it's not because a beast is attacking the sun or that the once fiery golden sun went out like a candle. <laughs> Tribes in Peru would shoot flaming arrows into the sky with hopes to scare away that said beast. Now the Chippewa did the same, though their intention was to reignite the sun with the flames. Not all of these myths are about doom and gloom, though. Legend has it that if you plant flowers during an eclipse, they will bloom brighter and more colorful than they otherwise would. 
While these age-old superstitions may cast shadows of uncertainty, the light of scientific knowledge illuminates our understanding, allowing us to look forward with anticipation, not fear, to the rare spectacle that is a total solar eclipse. Today is actually my parents' wedding anniversary, so Ooh, it's, wow. I don't know if it's a bad omen or not. <laughs> 40, 46 <laughs> years, so they've been you know, going strong for a while. Wow. But I did find it interesting, speaking of, I think maybe misunderstandings is not opposed mm -hmm. to, as opposed to myths. Uh, there was a sign on the interstate that said, keep your headlights on during the eclipse. <laughs> It's not going to be dark. It, about what it looks like now under the cloudy skies is about as dark as it's going to get here. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about it back in October. There was the annular eclipse, right. which was actually about the same coverage and expectation for our area as the one today. So there's so much more hype about mm. this one right. mm. because it cuts through a huge part of the U.S. and a lot of people are in that path of totality. But right. it's kind of funny for us. It's about the same. If you it's remember exactly. that in October, right? It was. It was, and it was a, yeah. like a sunny Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. It was during the weekend. I had my kids out to go look at we had the glasses and but there wasn't a lot of buzz about it right i was yeah. trying to remember i'm like wait i know we had the one in 2017 but i'm almost positive there was one more recent but <laughs> yeah. we didn't talk about it again it's kind of the, the this eclipse has a lot of good pr i know right it's true you know how, like the ancient cultures were afraid of it it kind of seems yeah. like it's coming back everyone's like uh, buying milk and bread like why <laughs> why is that happening it really no and what you need is toilet paper I mean, <laughs> It's true, yeah, you heard of that. I mean, eclipse, yeah. yeah. Right. Speaking of the eclipse back in 2017, I was interested, like, what is the difference between that one and the one happening today? There are a lot of differences, actually. Now, let's take a look at what I found. You may remember back in 2017, all the buzz about that total solar eclipse happened back in August of 2017. So what is the difference between the one happening this year and the one that happened seven years ago? In 2017, there was a smaller path. Only 12 million people were in that path of totality. Also, there was less time in totality. So that maximum time was only two minutes and 40 seconds in Illinois. Also, there was less solar activity in 2017. So basically every decade or so, the sun's magnetic field switches, causing solar solar minimums and maximums. In 2017, we were near a solar minimum, so there was less solar activity back then. People could still see the sun's outer atmosphere called the corona, like in this picture taken in 2017 of the eclipse, what it was in totality. However, the corona looked more simplistic with a less active sun. In 2024, we'll get some major improvements that will make this look even better. This time around, we'll have a wider path with over 31 million people in totality. Also, we'll spend more time in totality, four minutes and 30 seconds in Mexico for that maximum time. Also, this time around, we'll be near a solar maximum, meaning higher solar activity and a more complex looking corona. In totality, you'll be able to see more eruptions of solar material and things called streamers, loops, and prominences within the corona. And the reason why the path is wider this time around is because the moon will be closer to Earth. So 99% of the United States will either see a partial or total eclipse. And here in New Orleans, we will see a partial eclipse. Also, another amazing thing is more research will be done in 2024. It will also build on the research that was done back in 2017. NASA and other academic institutions will study the sun's corona, how it impacts our atmosphere, which has an effect on our GPS systems and other technology we use here on Earth. They'll also look into how this impacts animal behavior, plus many other endless studies on this magnificent solar eclipse happening on April 8th. So recap, how is 2024 different from 2017? We've got a wider path this time around, more time in totality, also with higher solar activity in 2024. We'll see even more intricate views of the corona. The corona is the sun's upper atmosphere, visible as a pearly glow around the eclipsed sun during totality. Its shape is determined by the sun's magnetic field, and is linked to the sunspot cycle. My question is, what is the sun's corona and why can't we always see it? Hi, this is Travis Martin at John C. Stennis Space Center. Now you asked, what is the sun's corona? Well, the sun's corona is the outermost parts of the atmosphere of the sun. And yes, the sun has an atmosphere just like the earth, but you can't see it with the naked eye. You need special tools to block out the brightness of the sun so you can actually see it. Now you can see that either through special filters that we have here at NASA, or you can see it through the lunar eclipse. And once the moon is in front of the sun, you will be able to see that halo or the atmosphere, the corona of the sun.
My friend and I were talking about the solar eclipse. She said that there might be a devil comet we could see during the eclipse. What is a devil's comet? My name is Bradley Tyree at NASA's Stennis Space Center. During the eclipse on April 8th, a comet called 12P Pons Brooks will be visible across the sky and will be located near Jupiter. 12P Pons Brooks is often called the Devil's Comet because of a mixture of ice and gas that bursts from the comet in the shape of horns. During the eclipse on April 8th, the darkness will provide a great viewing opportunity to see the comet and it will continue to get brighter all the way until April 21st. This comet is about the size of Mount Everest and it hasn't appeared in our sky in 71 years. I'm Amani Garia, a sixth grade scholar at Lake Forest, and my question is, why does NASA study solar eclipse? Hi, I'm Simone Wilson at NASA Stennis Space Center, and my question was, why does NASA study eclipse? NASA scientists study eclipse to make new discoveries about the sun, earth, and our space environment. Total solar eclipses are particularly important because they allow NASA scientists to see a part of the sun's atmosphere known as the corona that is too faint to see except for when the bright light of the sun is blocked. What role does technology play in studying and observing the solar eclipse? Hi, I'm Tom Rich at NASA Center Space Center. You asked about technology, so you know NASA is going to do technology. So when it comes to the eclipse, there's going to be several things that are going to happen. NASA is going to send up sounding rockets to go find out how the atmosphere changes. And we'll also be sending up weather balloons to see how that happens. But one of the things that we really want to do is we want to get the citizens involved. And you can go to the NASA Citizen Scientist website to be able to go and find out how you can get involved with your technologies. I wonder why you can see lights in space. Hi Conrad, thanks for the question about lights in space. So when we look out at the night sky, we're actually looking at stars, at starlights. Um, so if you think about it, the Earth, the sun is actually a yellow dwarf star. Um, so technically we could call that starlight, but it's just that the sun is relatively close to Earth. So it lights up our planet and it heats up our planet um, but when we look out at the night sky those stars or those suns if you want to call them are really far away and it takes that light a long time to get to earth uh, there are other um, objects in the solar system that we can see like planets or different asteroids we can see those because or the moon we can see those objects sort of if you quote lit up because it's actually the sun's light shining off of those planets um, and that's how we're able to see those planets and ob other objects in our solar system but thanks for the question conrad all great questions i wanted to show you this live picture right now from mexico this is the sun in totality this is a total eclipse of the sun in mexico you can actually see the sun's outer atmosphere those little pink kind of flares coming off there. I think those are called prominences. So you can see this wonderful image right now in totality. Now we are going to check back with our Meg Ferris. She's at the St. Tammany Children's Museum. Meg, what is happening out there? I know it's a lot of fun. What are the kids getting up to? What is happening in St. Tammany right now? First of all, I am so envious of all the people in Mexico getting to see the full thing. So it's very cloudy, as anyone here in our viewing area knows. But the sun peeks out every now and then. And just a few minutes ago, everyone came out of the Children's Museum. A lot of them have gone back in and put on their glasses and got excited. And when you looked up, you could see kind of the bottom right hand side of the sun having that big, big bite out of it with uh, the moon passing in front. But Julie Mendez is back with me from the Children's Museum, and she has some interesting things, and unfortunately, it's behind the clouds now. But Julie, show us this, what, what people can do with a simple whiteboard and, and a strainer. Okay, so if you don't have any eye protect, protection, one of the ways you can view the eclipse indirectly is through a pinhole projector. So actually, some household item, items everybody has at home is a colander. And when it gets real bright, you can look down at the shadow and it will actually reflect this, the light source, not 
the holes. So it'll start to do whatever the eclipse is doing and you'll see a crescent effect on the shadows. And we did, you put it on there a few minutes ago when, when the little peeking out behind the clouds and we could see it. Now these clipboards who, that are all here, they say, um, I see, I hear, I feel, I smell, and they want children and even adults to put down what they notice. And, and this is a NASA project. Tell me about that. Yes, so NASA actually collects a lot of information during the clips to record for history. And so one way is that there's a website called um, EclipseSoundscapes.org and you can actually go there and report your observations. They want to know things. What are animals doing? What do the clouds look like? What's the temperature like in your area? Mm -hmm. And people are collecting this information all around the world. There's also an app that you can download and it's called Globe Observer and so those are two ways you can actually provide information directly to NASA. And as you know NASA has uh, planes up in the air um, because they are collecting data and those data will help them with many things. It'll help them, um, they're studying the corona and that helps them understand about how um, solar weather um, can interrupt communications and satellite transmissions and and different things like that. And we're at a time now where the sun is in its uh, peak area. Uh, every 11 years, I believe it does that. And so that's really interesting. They, they, they learn a lot from this. It's not just, oh, fun, look, there's a solar eclipse. So, um, and so it's, um, I'm sorry, can't we can't control the weather. It's all Chris Franklin's fault, but he knows that. <laughs> but anyway, um, but that's just some of the things how NASA's getting involved and how we can actually help NASA collect data. And, and it was so cute, little Aurora Seals, my new best friend here at the Children's Museum. She said, well, what, do you, what does a solar eclipse sound like? And I said, well, you don't hear anything. And she pointed down and she's like, Meg, look, it asks you for what you hear. And you were explaining that when they go in total darkness, the um, some of the crickets and, and some of the insects will chirp. Um, that's how they call for their a mate when it gets dusk so they won't get eaten. Um, and some of the other animals will, you know, run off or do something different. So. Um, See, I was steering Aurora wrong, Julie. And anything else we need to tell people this time? We, we're going to come back a little bit. Anything else? No, just um, keep your eyes peeled for those breaks in the sun. And hopefully, even if you don't, weren't able to secure eclipse classes, you can use some shadows and observe the eclipse that way. All right. Well, that's it from here in Mandeville. And we'll be back in the next half hour to bring you an update. Reporting live from the St. Tammany Children's Museum, I'm Meg Farris. All right, thank you, Meg. This is a live look, I believe still out of Mexico. This is from NASA. So in Mexico right now, they are under totality. Yes, in Mexico. Uh, they had reached totality at one of the towns, but of course it is passing across a good portion of the central and northeastern uh, part of the nation there. So as the uh, moon continues to pass very quickly, uh, over Mexico, you'll likely see the uh, kind of what little bit of sunlight is left there uh, will quickly close and we'll start to see what Alexa was showing those little prominences, almost looks like little flares, little mountains on the edge of the sun where, again, scientists are able to do a lot more um, analyses of the sun during the eclipse only because it covers up such a large portion of the, this is, I'm sorry? this. This is in Temple, Texas. Boy, that's, again, this wow. is about wow. the, the extent of what we would see here. That's, mm -hmm. you know, actually probably is a little bit more than what we would yeah. see here in New Orleans if we were to get yeah. um, <laughs> some clearing in the skies. I was looking at visible satellites, still not looking very optimistic for us. But certainly it's going to be a really cool yeah. um, sight to see oh. uh, across the entire path and hopefully more of uh, the states start clearing out a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's the city in Mexico where the longest totality is going to happen in over four minutes. So mm. that is really special. Oh my God, it's something really special to see because the next one isn't for many years down the road. I think the next one from coast to coast in the USA is until 2045. And we were talking about path of totality in New Orleans way in the future, yeah. like what, 2050 something. I think that one was 2078 oh, for boy. New Orleans. And then as you pointed out, the Grand Isle one is in uh, 2052. And by the way, you may have seen that the next total eclipse for the US is in 2044. Right. That's a year earlier than what we've been saying, but that one only covers a tiny part of the U.S. It's mostly kind of Edmonton, Canada, um, places like that, and then like a tiny yeah. little swath of Montana that like 
is completely unpopulated. So <laughs> unfortunately, that won't be one of these big grand events like we're seeing right now and like we did in 2017. Although this one covers about twice the population than the 2017 one did. So really, this one is, you know, more people for sure in the path of totality this year. Not to mention the three million or four million people traveling to the path yeah. of totality. Right. Well, no, right. and, and um, I'm sure a lot of folks have seen it, that Airbnb map of the occupancy throughout the path of totality mm -hmm. that it's they're at you know 100 yeah. percent capacity of all these airbnbs from uh the texas state line up <laughs> toward maine as yeah, it was exciting to see because it, it's just you know more excitement of uh of science and astronomy and it's moments like this for kids i meg was talking about that it was moments like this for me that just got me fascinated by science it was a little disheartening to hear so many schools kind of sending the kids home and they may not be appreciating what's happening and again we're not in totality in new orleans and you know i do understand the safety of yeah. not wanting kids to look up at the sun and damaging their eyes but this is such a great uh experience yeah. that may get a lot of kids interested and even adults start asking questions about well what is an eclipse and how does it even work why don't we see it every month why don't we see right. these more often why do the paths always change? How are they easily forecast? That was something we were kind of yes. joking about. Yeah. I think we're gonna talk about a little bit later on about how we know already 100 years into the future. Yeah. Actually, I think there was a graphic that maybe you should, that we already know to like the year 3000. Yes, yes it's unbelievable. Th that you know these can be well projected out into the future that we know when they're gonna occur, the path they're going to take, and it's just, it, you know, it answers a lot of questions that maybe you haven't learned since you were in grammar school for, for uh, some of the kids. So this looks like we are now at totality in uh, central Mexico right now and just incredible to see. Yeah, that's really something. And by the way, Alexa was mentioning the uh, four, the longest, you know, one is going on right now. And then it gets a little bit less and less. It looks like the farther north you go. So the maximum for like Texas is about four and a half minutes in some spots. That's yeah, pretty long. It's pretty long. And then even in Canada, uh, some spots will see it for more than three minutes. And actually, both of those were longer than in 2017. Totality was up to about two and a half minutes with that last eclipse seven or so years ago. So, so this is a, a, a big, it, it affects more people or more people will yeah. see it. I hate to say affect because it's not really affecting right. uh, but uh, more people more of the populations will see it and we have shown those maps of just how many of the large u.s cities are yeah. within the path so it makes it easy to view and then also the duration as you said this is something that can be experienced so i would expect that you know from the astronomy standpoint you're going to get a whole lot more research being done now on 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 solar um, astronomy uh, because of this length of totality yeah, we wanted to bring in our astronomer here to ask okay. you some. And also, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go no, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing your astronomer over here. I want to know some more information. So what, what can you tell us about this? I mean, how much can we learn from an event like this? Well, we can learn uh, a lot. Uh, and that's why NASA is sending up rockets to in, into you know, the atmosphere and such, uh, into orbit, to study the, e the eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the size, the size of the sun could, could be refined. I mean, it, there's just a whole lot of information that could come out of an eclipse. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and we're going to see how, how much the uh, temperature varies. Right, exactly. Now, what kind of, um, I know animal, animal behavior can be impacted right. by this, um, other things like that. What do you hope, do you think there's going to be any big discoveries that will come from this as opposed to maybe the last one that we saw? Hopefully, um, and it is always going to be something learned. Right. It's just you know what what is it going to be? That that's the, the thing you know yeah. we we don't know yet. But with all of, I mean we learned a lot from 2017, and now that there's improvements mm -hmm. uh, with different experiments and such that's going on now, to uh, better answer the questions that that we had from 2017, so we right. get some answers now. Was there anything you personally um, were looking forward to most with this eclipse? Uh, just seeing totality, yeah. but being that I couldn't, uh, you know, unforeseen <laughs> right. circumstances, I couldn't be there, but, but if I was there, I wouldn't be here with you all. <laughs> yeah, and that would, <laughs> that would not be good. We understand. We, yeah, we, yeah, we understand, but then we couldn't get these uh, very important questions answered, but it is a, an amazing sight to be able to see the outer atmosphere, the corona, 
something that I was learning a lot about in just the last few weeks. There's just so much you can learn from it that has a lot of impacts on our GPS, our navigation, our other communication right. technology. So That's they'll right. be able to maybe improve that. I know everyone's always worried about that kind of thing. And, um, and uh, David, in the last one, um, you know, there are these things that they say to look at, you know, the diamond ring, the Bailey's beads. Did you see all that when you were there in Nashville last time? No, I did not get to see the diamond ring because the one, th the one most important thing is the very first time you see a total eclipse, you just want to look at it with an unaided eye uh -huh. and take it in. Of course, you know, during the totality, you don't need to have the uh, eye protection. But then near the end of the, uh, the eclipse, you got to really have your timing down to know when to put the glasses back yeah. on. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, um, but I mean, it's nothing like totality. Yeah. Right, and, and for New Orleans residents and you know, our lifetimes we've never seen when we've had several of these partial, and they're neat to see, it, it's kind of fun to see that crescent shape, but it's right. nothing like the experience of being a total. That's why I, I kind of laughed at that sign on the interstate of keep your headlights on during the eclipse. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if people realize it's not really gonna get very dark here. Yeah. I remember in the, um, the one last October, it almost looked as if a cloud was passing, you know, B uh, over the sun and kind of that filtered sunlight that was about as dark as it gets just like a cloud passing overhead for us in the partial and then the totality is what is just that what people have said almost kind of an eerie calm where everything <laughs> it seems to you know go to night all of a sudden and the animals start or the insects start chirping and it almost seems like a few minutes of twilight before the sun starts coming right back out. Yeah, yeah and I've heard people also describe it kind of like it, just almost a filter over the sun, right. or as a cloud, something right. like that, just something where it's not quite as bright as normal. But it's kind of crazy that you can cover up about 80% of the sun and it still just looks like <laughs> right, maybe right, a little exactly. bit of a cloudy right. day. Right. It know? is still so, bright sunshine yeah. even at 80% coverage. Yeah, and so I think this is now a shot from Arkansas, or this one is now in Texas, I think, Junction, Texas, it's saying. It looked like it was Junction, Texas, because oh. it is nearing the uh, Texas border now. Right. Right. And I think Little Rock starts at 1.51 uh, p.m., so we're kind of getting toward that part of the, um, you know, kind of you yeah. know, more northeast kind of part of, of the track. You know, I saw, and I know we're not in path of totality here, but I saw that you can actually remove your eclipse glasses in totality. Is that correct? Would you yeah, <laughs> yes, during totality, you don't need eye protection. Okay. But, but it's yeah. but timing it's, it right. It's the the timing, timing it right. Yeah. Uh, when you, right. you know, uh, Take them off and put them on. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess there's yeah. that, that caveat of we're telling you don't look at the sun, don't look at the sun. In totality, with yeah. those few minutes, you can, <laughs> but be real quick to get those glasses right. back on. Right, yes. and don't linger like you were saying, uh, because right. once it starts to peak out, it's already kind of too late. You need because to have them Because the, on the right first before. time you see a total eclipse, you, you do not want to be taking a lot of pictures and stuff. You want to be looking at it uh -huh. because a lot of times things go wrong and you're looking down and then the eclipse is over and you missed it. <laughs> yeah, and that's a lot of questions we get. It's like, can, I, can we take pictures of it? Can we use our cell phones and things like that? But like you say, there are gonna be plenty of those pictures out there for mm -hmm. professionals. Um, you know, just, just enjoy it if you can, you know, right. with your glasses safely, of course. And our max eclipse time, 149. We're getting close. We are we're getting, getting close. close. I wonder how. Just wish it. we could yeah. see it. I, I know. Just wish we could see it. <laughs> it's like the clouds are getting. I don't know thicker. if we. I would go to our sky camera because <laughs> yeah. there is not. A, yeah, that's uh, um, not looking too no. promising at all. Um, I know Austin. We're actually going to be talking a little bit uh, later to my sister-in-law uh, who lives in Austin and. While they are under mostly cloudy skies, she just sent me a picture on her phone, hopefully she didn't burn her lens, of, of she can see it. So there may be getting some more breaks in Austin, because I know a lot of folks that went to Austin or some of those suburbs to see the eclipse, and it looks like maybe they're getting some clearing or at least enough breaks that they'll be able to see it. And then I was just looking, uh, the Indianapolis Speedway has opened up and they're allowing the, I guess the, the path as well as the stands open for folks to come and watch it in there. Ah, that's nice. Wow. I know, such a shame if you're gonna travel to totality to and then you get cloudy. Well, and, and you know, I, it's funny because a lot of folks have been asking, hey, we really wanna go see it, where should I go? And I said, you're, you're better off toward the Midwest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Texas, you're gonna have that, you know, it, it was kind of a iffy if they would get some breaks. There have been a you know slightly better chance from Dallas to Little Rock, but I said, it's looking more likely to have it from Indianapolis, Cleveland, and then into New England 
as to having, uh, but I don't know if folks were <laughs> that gung-ho about yeah. going to see the eclipse and yeah. to travel that far. And again, uh, you know, it being so close to New Orleans, uh, you know, just an easy drive um, to Austin wouldn't have been bad, but mm -hmm. hopefully they get, because I know there are a lot of New Orleanians in those suburbs, and I'm hoping they'll get the clearing to, to see it. I'm sure we'll start getting a lot of pictures on social media. Yeah, and you have to think, even if it's a cloudy day, I mean, with the sun turning to twilight, you know, you're still going to see some effects. It's right. not going it to be will, Yes, it will drastic, get, it, in the totality, it'll still get dark. Maybe mm -hmm. you won't be able to see it, but just yeah. for the best. Yeah. We're always trying to find that silver yeah. lining in, uh, in, the, in the, the cloudy skies. It'd been great if we had a big dome of high pressure over the central part of the nation. Yeah. Everybody was sunny. It would have had any issue, but of course, that's just not the way. Yep. Did you see that thing today that people were skydiving in the path of totality? Like we ran a story this morning. People no. were doing like a, like you're jumping like one minute before totality with the glasses on. Did you see this? Uh, how no. are the glasses not going to fly off? <laughs> I guess they're under the goggles. I don't think on. they thought that through. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's funny. People are like, this is something that only happens ever. Like yeah. rare. Let me add something else very rare to it. I know. I guess I don't feel that need. If I just saw it, that would be really cool. Now, for it's also cool to see in the totality from an aircraft, like yeah. if you're flying in you know mm -hmm. in the path that'd be kind of a neat thing to see yeah I don't know in if fact, I need a sky jump I don't know if I need to jump out of the plane yeah. then. <laughs> I heard that uh, Winnie Miller our anchor was telling me last night that she's going to be getting off just in time to see it so she'll be flying during like the partial eclipse Whoa. really no into way. Ohio yeah and then she's gonna get off and I gave her some some glasses because I was like oh you're gonna need these yeah. <laughs> you can see the, the uh, almost full path I think it was gonna be like 98 oh, percent or wow. something where she was so yeah that's awesome yeah something kind of cool you know this morning Eric Paulson made a good point he's like it probably looks cool from the International Space Station to see that shadow go across the earth that's true yeah. if they're in the right position they would be able to see it if they're on you know this side of the earth at that time true yeah Look at what every 90 minutes, I believe, it goes around the Earth. So they would have that window to see. Although they have to also be passing over North America. Yeah, that's true. That so. could be cool. Well, yeah, and I think that was a shot from Arkansas that we've had up for a bit. Oh, this is Dallas. Okay, and it's nice to see. It looks like some people in Dallas are able to see it. Yeah, so I mean, I'm we were talking about how many about folks from here were going out there to see it. So it looks like maybe from Austin to Dallas, they were getting a, a decent window of clearing to to see it. That's really nice. And so many people, you know, in that part of Texas. Uh, so yeah, they'll be able to see it too. It looks nice. I was going to say, should we play the game? How old are we going to be in 2052 when the solar eclipse passes yes. over New Orleans? Or 2052, 20... we'll be fine, right? <laughs> like still alive? Fine? Yeah. I, That's I a, you know, still a, I well, know. alive, yes. Yeah, I don't know maybe. what kind of condition we'll be in in 2052. <laughs> but. If we're lucky. Yeah, the yeah. one in 2045 is 21 years away. Uh, 52 is 28 years. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You, but you kind of forget it is the year 2024. Oh, yeah. We're not that far yeah. removed yes. from the 2050s. That's true. Yeah. We're actually closer than it's than we think. That's a good point. The 2078 one, though, 54 years away. Mm. So say 54. Okay. I'm 42. So <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. Might be wheeled out and <laughs> not know what's going on. But hey, I'll be here. Maybe. <laughs> Strap the glasses oh, on you. You know yeah. what's interesting is the, the one in 2052 passing directly over Grand Isle. I know. What do you think the, the Visitor Bureau of Grand <laughs> Isle <laughs> is going to be doing? I mean, they only have to plan for the Tarpon Rodeo every year. 2052, <laughs> I hope they're already making their plans now. Pensacola, Destin, I mean, these are going to be huge destinations. Yes. And Leeville, yes. Louisiana. Yeah, and all, like, these. this one is very easy for us to get to. And like Alexa was pointing out, Jackson, Mississippi in the 2045 one. Yes. I mean, it's not far. That's no, that's also... an easy. That's a that's a day trip yeah yeah, yeah. and Dustin in Orlando and Miami very popular you know oh and Dustin too and yeah so yeah you know if you miss this one here locally uh, mm -hmm. we're you're kind of not looking great for the rest of the afternoon but you know 2045 yeah. Jackson Destin and you'll be able to see it just make your plans 21 yeah. years out just you yeah. know start booking those Airbnb if Airbnb is still around in 21 years I don't know I might well, be out of business by then yeah what will it be by then I don't know who knows right <laughs> might be flying cars at that point <laughs> yeah all right, so this is a live look. This is from Dallas, so they are nearing totality. What is the, uh, do we yeah. know the peak time in Dallas? I do. Let me look it up I, really I mean, quick. They're, they're certainly getting close. Yeah, give me one second. And you're going to have probably a, a similar look to the, to the sun in Austin. Dallas um, totality begins at 140. Okay, so they're about Central nine time. minutes away. Mm -hmm, they oh, are wow. close. Yep. Very exciting. Then it moves, of course, to Oklahoma. You get into Arkansas. Um, for Kentucky, it starts around 2 p.m. 
and then you get to Cleveland, that's at 2.13, so it's kind of funny, and um, that's in Central Time, I translated at 3.13 Eastern Time. So it's interesting, it's, all, it's 1.30 right now, I mean, all these populated cities, even into the Midwest and the Northeast, all of them are going to see their totality start within the next hour or so. Right, I mean, it, it, it is quick. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't last for very long. The, the shadow moves very quick. And also, uh, you know, for a scientist, it gives you an idea of just how fast the orbit of the moon is. And you can kind of calculate it, uh, throwing a little bit of math in there. You can make calculations based on how fast the, the shadow is moving across the Earth. Yeah, very true, yeah. I'll mm -hmm. let you work on those numbers and uh, yeah. you get back to us at the end of the segment. <laughs> I know, right. Oh, that's my job, okay. <laughs> yeah. David, would you like to do that? Yeah. <laughs> right, actually, you want to start crunching the numbers? Yeah. Actually, the, the shadow, uh, when it's going across Earth, when it was entering, say, Mexico into Texas, it was traveling about 1,500 miles per hour. Ah. By the time it reaches the northeast, it's about 7,000 miles per hour. Oh, my God. Interesting. Okay. Wow. So that accounts for the lower time, you know, yes. that's spent in totality the farther north you go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Looks like Kerrville, Texas is in totality now as they're... Looks like the camera almost went oh. black, so they have to kind of iris up to oh, yeah. let in as much light as possible. Wow. wow those, are, those are those Bailey's beads, you know, that you've heard about, those little... Um, oh, wow. You know, dots on the side. Oh. You know, what, what did you call them? Pro I, prominences. Yeah. There's so many different names. It's like streamers, loops, prominences, right. okay. solar flares, coronal mass ejections. Right. What you just said, <laughs> Bailey's beads. Like, oh my God, how do you keep track of all this? Yeah. And you can kind of see what looks to be maybe some low clouds or high clouds uh -huh. passing. It's hard to see what type of uh, level the clouds are in. Mm -hmm. But definitely still some passing clouds in Texas. But at least it looks like enough uh, clearing for uh, viewing. And I believe, do we have my sister in law? Molly, Molly, are you on the phone with us? Oh, maybe the eclipse yeah. took her offline. <laughs> Molly, are you there? Is Austin still around? <laughs> I was hoping to get just a civilian's perspective of what they're seeing yeah. on the ground. Molly, are you there? Maybe we'll try and get her. Maybe it does mess with things now. Hey, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's you know possible. What? They say that's that. That's why we're doing all this uh, studying right now. That's true, yeah. They said it could mess with our communications. Hmm. So parts of Texas already in totality moving up toward Dallas, and they will be in totality in Dallas uh, in about six minutes, or maybe even a little less than six minutes now, as that will continue up toward then kind of Hot Springs, Arkansas, Little Rock, some of the larger cities we've been talking about as being destinations for viewing the eclipse and then continuing up through, uh, uh, further through the Midwest. And we were pointing out, we kept pointing out New England and Maine. It's like the one spot where you're yeah. pretty much guaranteed to have a great view of it. Yes, yeah. Burlington, Vermont, and up yes. toward Bangor, uh, Maine. Looking a lot good. of Western Maine is kind of unpopulated, wooded near the Canadian uh, line. Yeah. yeah maybe that may be the best viewing. Yeah. Just away from people, out in yeah. the middle of the woods, yeah. just yeah. you and a moose. That's true. <laughs> That's Molly. And speaking of that, Caribou, Maine starts at 2.32. Oh. Yeah. oh. yeah. So there's Careville, Texas. Hello. Hey, Molly. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. How are you? Oh, my gosh. How's it going? Oh, good. good. How are you? Good. So this is my sister-in-law, Molly Mulhern, and she is in Austin, Texas. So is the clouds, you sent me a picture a few minutes ago to where you could kind of see it. Are the clouds broken enough that you can see it? So the clouds have been super, super patchy. So we've been getting glimpses of her, her being the sun and the moon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right now, it's super, super dark. Oh, gosh. It's oh, really? So um, oh, you hear all the cheering? Mm -hmm. There's, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at it without the glasses, and I can see better, but I probably shouldn't be doing that. No, well, <laughs> if, you're, if you're still in totality in Austin, you, it's okay to look at it without glasses, but as soon as the sun starts to break oh, wow. through, as the, as the moon passes, uh, you'll want to put those glasses yeah. back on. I don't want you blind. Oh you're getting, you're getting, getting so married dark. on Friday, so I don't want you blind for your wedding. It's gone. <laughs> the sun is gone? It's completely gone. I can't see the sun anymore. How cool is that? It's like, it's like dark outside. <gasps> oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. Somebody play the song. <laughs> You're gonna Wow. All right, so this, this is, is what, amazing. This is what well you it's can't so see dark. it. We are seeing in New Orleans we've got mostly cloudy skies. We're kind of hoping for a little break, but of course visibility wow. here is uh, or, This is so uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. So this is what you want to hear. That's, that's what you, oh I'm, I'm expecting this is the mood it's, of it's like all it's Americans. Dark outside. 
from Texas to Maine throughout the afternoon Crazy. of how cool yeah. it is to be in totality. Yeah. Must be you can hear the people in the background oh even. Yeah. Can, y'all, can y'all hear me still? Yes, yes we can. I, we, I know, we, we love so hearing your enthusiasm for seeing it. Outside in the middle of a day. So um, this, is, this is such a surreal experience right now. Oh, yeah, the, the automatic lights in our apartment complex turned on because it's so dark. Oh, no kidding. Huh. Do you have other neighbors out there working as well? What did you say? I said are other neighbors. You're in, a, in an apartment complex. Are other neighbors out there looking? Yes, everybody's out in the parking lot just like staring at the sky. It almost, it's like very, like a, the end of the world almost. It's mm. Well, it's not. Strange. I mean, it, that myth has been debunked. It's, the, uh, it's not the end of the world, so you can, you can. Oh, yeah. Again, it's just so quiet. Often. There's no more, like the birds, the birds stop tweeting. Really? really? <laughs> now, are you hearing like crickets or insects? I don't hear any crickets or insects. I hear the air conditioner. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so, it's so quiet and dark. Okay, it's coming back. Yeah, oh, it, well. it, it doesn't last long, and, and that's when you'd have to put your glasses back on. And you're looking at Kerbal, okay, Texas, yeah. well, by the way, the, right now. Yeah, the clouds are... I think it's just there's so many... There's, the cloud coverage is so thick that we're kind of seeing it briefly come out. So it's coming back around now. It's like a little tiny pinprick in the sky. Like, it looks like a star right now. Right. Wow. Wow, this is crazy. I, I logically knew this was going to happen, but then it's happening, and I'm like, wow. Well, you know, and that's what we've been talking about, that it really, even, you know, to see the at 80% cover, 70%, it's neat to see, but it's a completely different experience to be in that thin path of totality. And it just so happens that this yeah. eclipse is covering a, a large portion of the United oh States and so many major U.S. cities. Wow! Yes. And for our camera, so there's a tiny at... sliver now, and it's like it feels like dawn. Like there's a, there's so much more light already, but it's not completely back yet. I'm putting my glasses back on though. Yes, please put the glasses <laughs> yeah. back on. Um, what we're seeing is Temple, Texas, but yeah, by the way, on your screen. It's getting it's getting lighter outside now. Um, there is a, cl- a cloud covering it, so I have a feeling once this cloud moves, it's going to get even brighter. Um, yes, it is brighter. It's like, wow, it's so crazy. Well, you just heard Molly. I mean, just a few minutes ago, it sounded like she kind of told us the moment it went into totality yeah. in Austin, and we're looking at a camera here in Dallas, and they're probably about a minute away from totality there. So. That was roughly what five minutes, and not even that. Yeah. Maybe four, three minutes yeah. between Austin yeah. and Dallas to go into totality. So that's just how fast, how quickly the the shadow is moving. Yeah, yes. and don't forget, for us, we're what ten is- minutes away from our maximum right now. I mean, obviously with the clouds and stuff, it's not as exciting. Yeah. But we are just ten minutes from max in New Orleans. Yeah, we're seeing a little crescent again from the sun, so it's coming back. But wow. <laughs> I see why people traveled here and why we're told to stay off the roads today. Well, and, and you know, it's it's, oh, wait, so yeah, it, tell us this. Um, what were uh, folks and maybe government officials and the media telling residents of Austin to do during these couple of hours? Were they, were schools canceled? Were, were people told to stay off the roads? I mean, yeah. what were they doing? Yeah, so I know that UT Austin canceled classes today or like had them remote. Um, my job was remote today and pretty much the consensus was if you don't have to go anywhere, don't, especially right now. But the real reason is also the traffic, because millions of people traveled here to uh, see it. So, and I understand why. <laughs> um, wow, it's getting bright again. The automatic lights are turning, or well, they're still on right now, but. And as it's getting bright wow. there, we're seeing Dallas, Texas, and oh, about it's to go just dark. Right, we're looking, we're looking at a live camera in Dallas, and they are seconds away from going into totality. So it's already. You know, the, the oh, center of that moving. shadow has already passed Austin and is now moving up toward Dallas right now. Wow. Yep. Wow, that's so cool. So they have 100, do they have 80, they have less no, than 100% they're at 100% Dallas? as well. Mm-hmm. So you had two major Texas oh, okay. cities, Austin mm-hmm. and Dallas, all within the, um, the path, almost the center of the path. And then Indiana, you have Little Rock, Indianapolis, Cleveland, um, Bangor, Maine, you've got a lot of yeah. large cities that a lot of folks are traveling to. But it does make sense for the number of people that probably have come in town to Austin to, to see it. Mm-hmm. You want to keep those people off the road. I know Fredericksburg is, is what, not too yeah. far from Austin. And I know a lot of folks that uh, 
that I know some neighbors that were headed there, just kind of the surrounding suburbs of Austin to, to see it. Yeah. Yeah, the birds are tweeting again. No wow. kidding. So. Oh, good. Oh, true. Oh, all right, all right. Austin is still on the map. Thank goodness. The birds are not stressed anymore. We didn't, we didn't lose Austin. The birds are okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to go play uh, Whitney Houston Total Eclipse of the Sun probably now. Uh, so. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Molly. Um, Molly Mulher, my sister-in-law, um, live for us in Austin. Thanks so much. And actually, I'll see you this week. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 So that is, it's, it's actually funny to hear it from just a non-scientist mm -hmm. and the excitement of, yeah, we kind of knew it was going to happen, but boy, seeing it in its totality is something that is amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I, some folks were a little um, questioning, I can't believe people are driving out to mm -hmm. see this. I said, you know, it's, it's something to experience. I've never experienced it. I want to, maybe I have to wait till the one that's in Jackson or that passes over New Orleans or Grand Isle, but it is, as you heard, really just almost it's amazing. unworldly to, to experience that for those few minutes you go from sunshine to darkness and animals kind of respond as she said the birds got quiet it got kind of eerily quiet around and everybody was looking up at the sky almost like a sci-fi movie uh, yes. you know disaster movie everyone <laughs> looking at the sky um and thankfully uh, nothing happened yeah that's a good, I like that word you said, like otherworldly. It is, it's, it's just is. probably kind yeah. of an eerie feeling. Mm -hmm. I've heard uh, some scientists describe the sky as going almost like a silvery purple. It's just wow. something that we're not used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Something that um, is, is just not, yeah. is, is something that, you know, I mean, very few people actually get to experience. Yes. Do you all think there's anybody in this path of totality who doesn't know this is going to happen today? <laughs> we're, like, ah! we're not in the path of totality. We've been talking about it exactly. almost ad nauseum. So, so people, I mean, in the news, they're like, all right, how much longer are you going to talk about this yes. eclipse every day? I'm like, every day until, the, until it's done, we're going to be showing that forecast. Yeah. Three o'clock this afternoon, we'll stop talking. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. For the five o'clock, we won't say anything about the eclipse. Yeah. Although I will show a visible satellite to show you'll see the shadow going right over. Oh, yeah. We talk about how oh. visible satellite is basically a picture of the clouds it uses mm -hmm. sunlight you will see that shadow um, pass yeah. across the central part of the nation on visible satellite pretty cool and I wonder what we're seeing outside you know we're in the studio we're only like five minutes away from what we Ooh. consider our maximum here in New Orleans probably I mean our cameras are showing a lot of clouds but our last shot I did see for just like a second I saw a little crescent of the Sun Oh. on our camera that we have uh, for WWL, but um, I'm not sure if we're, we're still seeing that or if it's just a cloudy day outside, but you might be able to see a little bit of that um, like I did just a few minutes ago, but. That's not a live picture of New Orleans. Yeah, that's, that's, that I believe is still Dallas, who, yeah. yes, who, is, who is under wow. the uh, totality right now. And I'm kind of looking at uh, monitors off air of, of what's going on in Dallas and they're showing the temperature dropping Whoa. and they're, they're at least looking at the thermometer and 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 folks I, you know, this is this is what gets you excited about science this science mm -hmm. is is something that needs to be experienced uh, that's why we had mentioned earlier it was a little you know disheartened to hear schools laying them out and you yeah. know I do understand the safety but this is how you learn I know my daughter's school they're giving all the kids um, glasses of course you're not really going to see anything yeah. but they were also doing space themed snacks they were nice. doing moon pies and sun chips and <laughs> as a matter of fact i tried to get for a demonstration at studio diamond a moon ring. pie i could not find a moon pie anywhere and there's the diamond ring effect look at that cool. uh, at dallas um now that is cool what's that yeah it's it's just showing up this happens when you go into totality and then right when you come out um and yeah it's one of those cool things that you can see right david whoa Uh, like between two mountains, right? Th it's, it's going through, right? Right, right. and just showing up like one really big, and the ring, of course, is the you know the ring around, and then um, like the the diamond would be that big. Um, well, it's one of those like Bailey's beads that we were talking about. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that just wow. shows up super bright. So I love that shot of Dallas also not looking at the sun, but just looking at the city. Yes, you know? yes. a bit in that kind of ear, it, you wouldn't. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Wait, that was a, that was another shot of Dallas. It was that it was that much brighter. Oh, okay, uh, so that it, just with that small portion of the sun back out, you saw how much brighter it already was. Yes. So that's why we were joking. Even at eighty percent coverage, <laughs> yeah. how bright it still is here. I mean, you walk outside. It's you know, yeah, that's us a lot. This, but is, us this is why we're okay. not showing you New Orleans yeah, very much. What a we shame. unfortunately can't see. Again, if, if there's a, an occasional break, I keep glancing over at our visible satellite. But oh, you know what's actually interesting? Oh yeah. 
I'm looking at our visible satellite. I don't know if we can show this. We're losing what looks to be almost like it's going into sunset, but it's the path of the, uh, I'm gonna widen it out. If we can go to max two, I don't know if we can pull that up real quick. Um, you'll also start to see, and it's, I apologize, it needs to kind of load some of the images here. You will watch the path of the, the shadow. It, it's kind of loading some of the images here, so just give it one second. It's processing a lot of data, and oh. that's the path. That wow. is what it looks to be. I'm, I'm, I glanced at it and wow. looking, I went, wait, we're not losing the sunlight. Yeah, I'm like, oh wait, yeah, that's the eclipse. Mm -hmm. oh wow. My this is gonna be a cool time lapse later. This will be a too, very cool it. time lapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving Look across the US, yeah. So yeah, that is, the, that is the show. So as we've said, the visible satellite, this really gives you an idea of how that works. It is basically taking a picture and it needs sunlight to see those clouds, but it's, if it loses the light, then we lose the images. That's why we don't use it at night. And if there is an eclipse, we're also gonna lose the imagery then too. Yeah, so cool. And if you were watching um, just a few minutes ago for Dallas when it was, it seemed to be coming out of, you know, uh, right. totality mm -hmm. and it looked like dawn, you know? Yes. It looked like very, very early right. in the morning. Yes, that was very cool. Yeah. Now, where is this? Is, is this Arkansas? This is Arkansas. Okay, wow. Yes, and they're really close. Um, if not at totality in parts of Arkansas. For example, Little Rock is gonna be in about four minutes, 1.51 p.m. It starts totality, uh, so very, very close there. And again, for us, we're at about maximum right now, not that you can see it, but <laughs> this will be the peak. <laughs> Two minutes. Let's and you know, it's funny, we're, we're talking about it, just to visualize the size of this, I'm looking at our, our visible satellite, uh, yeah, I mean, New York and, and the East Coast are already getting into the shadow. So this is, I mean, the shadow of it. And we, we, I guess to give you a, a better idea of just what this looks like, we kind of show you that thin path of totality. And yes, that is where it's going to be at maximum. But outside of that, almost the entirety of the nation is yes. seeing some portion of the, the shadow um, uh, come across. So, I mean, the fact that it is almost bisecting the nation is incredible that nearly everyone in the continental United States can see a portion of the eclipse. Right, I think it was every single, so, well the 48 states right. uh, had at least a partial eclipse and then I think it was 13 states where they have the totality crossing and then like two like slivers of states elsewhere but um, yeah, huge chunk of the U.S. I mean, I guess that's why this one is such a big deal over these really big cities. It's a wider path. It's lasting for longer. Um, yeah. Hence, I don't hence know the hype. And I know we've yeah. talked about the rarity, and I don't know if we have a package that we'll still go to, but you know, you think the Earth is 70% water and ocean, so yeah. the fact that these aren't necessarily quote unquote rare, the chances of them passing over land and passing over, you know, populated areas is rare. So right. that's why it doesn't happen as often. And more often you see the pass of these eclipses and it's over the ocean, it's almost entirety over the ocean, or it may be rapid, you know, kind of coming to an end just as it's clipping uh, some landmass to where, you know, it was out over the ocean, or you had to go to an island to see it. I know there have been some solar eclipses in the past that. Uh... All right, so this is. Oh. Oh, oh this is a, look at that. a wedding, a wedding? In Arkansas. Is that As, a bad omen, though? Yeah, I know. Right? Married in an eclipse? <laughs> we heard there are no bad omens with it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, right. still, you know, the, the myths, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at that. Just this is Arkansas? Oh. Are these mass weddings? <laughs> or is it just one wedding? Mass weddings. <laughs> is it? It's getting dark. Okay, Whoa. so they're getting into totality. It's, yeah, oh yeah, that's creepy. Whoa. Wow. And you can see the sky. I love that. I, I'm always curious. What does the sky actually look like? Wow. <laughs> There they are. I almost, I'm, at, at this point, I'm kind of more interested to in see what it looks like on the ground yeah, as, yeah. as compared to just looking up at the sun. I, it's, so exactly. neat to see that that eerie twilight yeah darkness i know it's like they it's it's like the sun is 400 times wider than the moon right <laughs> and it's like 400 times farther so it like lines up perfectly. that's why Did they line up that? perfectly yeah. that's why they both look right. the same size in the sky it's like amazing how is that even that's not like that anywhere else i think on any other planets in the solar system exactly a special gift for us yeah. <laughs> to get to see it yeah that is cool that, it's cool to see and then you heard from my sister how exciting it is <laughs> you don't think it's going to be exciting it's like okay this looks like dusk but it's dusk in the middle of the afternoon and yeah. and all of a sudden this isn't a yeah. you know it's just suddenly it goes to near black like that look how and look how cool the sky is when you yeah. look away from the sun it's nighttime That's it looks incredible like now i can see why 
people back people, a thousand yes. years ago were like, this is Yeah, you're, this you're is right. Yeah. Before you understood what was yeah. going on, you could see why people were freaked out. Matter of fact, people are still freaked out about it, and we yeah. kind of understand how this all works. Yeah. And you know, lunar eclipses last so much longer. They can last for like a couple hours, you know, but these are so short with only a few minutes of totality. So it's like, that's right. kind of nice for people in the past too. It's like, you know in five minutes that you're good after <laughs> yes. it's happened. Um, You'd have time to start shooting those arrows up yeah. at the sky to relight the <laughs> sun, just in case. They probably thought they were doing it right. They launched yeah. the arrows, a couple minutes later it comes back, all right, it worked. They're yeah. like, we gotta keep doing Mission this. accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what it looks like here. I know probably not a big, big change. We're looking at the cameras right now. Yeah. So are we, are we at totality here? For I mean, as as yep. far as our yeah. It's nothing. already done, huh? Yeah, I think we're a couple all. minutes past our peak. Yes. Um, and looks like yeah, we didn't see you know, it's interesting. Though. I mean, that looks like a normal shot. You know, yes. I mean, we only have twenty percent of our normal. True. Sun yeah, yeah that's here. true. It's yeah. only twenty percent of the sun, uh, the sun's light, and still looks like a normal. <laughs> Cloudy day here. Cloudy yeah. day, yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. You can't really. And see I noticed that the uh, the sun is more active with the, a lot of prominences. In 2017, you didn't have that. You only had like one large prominence. Mm. And we had uh, solar cycle 25 right now, which and it's the sun is at its maximum or heading toward its maximum. So the activity was expected to be a lot more this time around. Yeah. So the solar corona will look a lot different now than it did in 2017. Yeah. No kidding. Right. More impressive and kind of swirly for those who yeah. are in the path, right? Yeah. So, so are astronomers expecting to get more data, more information from this eclipse and in one's past? Oh, yes. And we Especially have more the one modern in technology. Too. Right, right. Yeah, well, and with the techno, but even from right. 2017. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's fascinating to watch the the, 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 the sunscape, but even more so, I think, is now watching the crowds and what it actually looks like on the ground. Uh, this is, again, from Arkansas, where it, again, kind of looks like twilight. And shortly, it will, you'll start to get just that thin sliver of the sun coming back out, and then it'll be bright sunshine. It looks like much of the path of totality in Arkansas. Where I'm looking at satellites as well as what we're looking at on screen here. Uh, it looks like they've been under mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies good, uh, across a good portion of the state. So uh, most of um, Arkansas, at least within the path, should be able to see this fairly well. And then uh, it'll be headed up toward kind of the southeastern tip of uh, Missouri into southern uh, Illinois, then kind of cutting across Indiana, then into northern and western Ohio before making its way toward the Great Lakes and then up into New England. Right, and I think we're going to have someone from Niagara Falls. Talk yes, who, yeah. who is on the uh, Canadian side of the falls that is going to talk to us a little bit later about what he's seeing. Another scientist, actually a local scientist, I think, believe he's a, a Ben Franklin grad. Huh. Yeah, this is magnificent. I mean, it's very ominous, but it's, I mean, can you believe what it looks like in that path of totality? It's, it's amazing. Where is this from? Is that Arkansas? Yes, this is Russellville. Okay. If I can... Yeah, you can see the kind of material coming off the corona there, off on the sides. Oh, it's like maybe we have to change a filter on the, because there, <laughs> as soon as that sunlight starts breaking back out, the, the cameras, I think, have to change filters. All right. Uh, Okay. Alexandra has and now us. we're going to talk to someone from Stennis who's joining us. Travis Martin, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And so it's all happening right now. What is it like for you to see all of these images coming in as the eclipse is happening at totality across all these huge cities? I know like myself and everybody at NASA and around the world, this is like exciting, so exciting. Um, here, the weather is not cooperating, but I actually love to see it on video elsewhere. Yeah, and we've heard that um, NASA has a lot of plans for this eclipse. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I do know that they actually have additional science missions uh, flying in the upper levels of atmosphere with instrumentation to take more data on this total so, um, solar eclipse. Uh, but all around the world, uh, we are actually studying data all the time about the sun and to understand the environment around us and our solar system. Have you ever been in the path of totality for an eclipse? 
I have once as a child. Wow. And it was still it was still an all striking event and I still will remember it for the rest of my life. I mean, it is a sense of a sense of enlightenment. Um, it is a special feeling to actually be in that, that cone of totality. Wow. And so we've been seeing these images come in and some of the common terms that we hear like the Bailey's beads, um, the diamond ring effect and things like that. Tell us a little bit about what we should look at as we see all these images coming in or some special things that we might notice with these images. Well, as you see, as it from the video you can see on the screen, it is actually coming. The moon is moving away from the sun. So at that first moment, you would have seen that diamond ring effect or that first sliver of light. Um, but in the what I would like to have had to be in for myself is to be in that cone and actually see the coronal, the atmosphere of the sun, just to see that halo effect around the moon. That is like really exciting and, and just an awe striking like scene to see in real life. Yeah, and of course there's the other type of eclipse, the annular eclipse, where the moon is right in front of the sun, but there's still that ring of fire. Tell us a little bit about that and um, maybe why you think it doesn't usually come with as much hype as this one. Well, so so the difference between this total eclipse and the annual eclipse is, is the fact that the moon's orbit around the Earth is not in a single plane. It actually is a little off center. So a lot of the solar eclipses that happen all around the world are annular eclipses. It is a special time, a special position for the moon to be exactly in the position, you know, some uh, that relative uh, shape to cover the entire sun. That only happens, you know, every so many years. So this is why it's really special. And it's very special because it's going to be a long time before this happens over the United States. And we had one question coming in, uh, some of these questions from students. Someone asked about the different types of space storms and space weather and things like that while we're talking about all of these kind of space events. Could you tell us a little bit about that, different types of uh, storms that happen in space? I wish I could, but that is not my specialty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. Um, okay, and then of course, besides the solar eclipse, there are often lunar eclipses, and that is actually coming up, a total lunar eclipse, much more you know, quickly in the future. In fact, we have one next year, I think. So how is that different? Oh, that is more or less the opposite of what we're experiencing today, where the, the Earth will actually block the sun's rays on the moon, and so the moon will seemingly almost disappear for a moment it's in the night, and then it will reappear just in the same fashion as it's doing right now. It just won't be as bright. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, joining us from NASA Stennis Space Center, Travis Martin, we appreciate your time today. No, thank you. And it looked, and now we're going to go to Chris. All right, we're going to be joined by another NASA scientist here just to kind of get some of the technical stuff that obviously we are meteorologists. We, we consider ourselves the station scientists, but uh, there are folks that know a whole lot more about astronomy and, and solar astronomy that, uh, that can kind of answer some of these questions a little bit better for us. And uh, I believe we're joined um, via Zoom with someone. What are we, what are we going to? Okay, we are looking live. Uh, where is this from? Okay, Carbondale, Illinois. So this is in southern Illinois. Uh, really, the totality for Illinois was only going to cover the uh, southern tip. Uh, but Carbondale is a pretty uh, large city and now in totality. And again, as you have been watching uh, steadily since this started to move into the United States, we saw it in totality in Mexico. And then what, just it's been about an hour hour and a, not even an hour and a half now we're already at uh, at Illinois so it moves very quickly you get those couple of minutes of totality in some of these larger cities the larger cities that have been uh, experiencing it and then just as fast you get the couple of minutes of what is seemingly twilight and that little sliver of sun starts to come back up as the shadow continues to move and then bright sunshine is back and you need to put those glasses back on again uh, the only areas that could remove the glasses are within the path of totality and only for those couple of minutes uh, at its maximum coverage so it again doesn't have 
a, a large window. Joining us now is uh, Lance Landrum, who is a uh, scientist with NASA. Uh, you are a NASA engineer. You're from New Orleans. You went to Ben Franklin? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I went to Ben Franklin. I graduated in 2003, born and raised in New Orleans. Left when I was 18, and somehow I made it into NASA as an engineer. <laughs> so what kind of work do you do for NASA? I work in launch services program, and what we do is we help to bridge the gap between spacecrafts and launch vehicles. So we do independent analysis of commercial launch vehicles, like SpaceX's rockets or ULA's rockets, Falcons, Falcon Heavies, Vulcan. And we make sure that those rockets are going to be safe for NASA payloads. We also launch payloads for NOAA, Chris, which you probably oh, be yes. interested in. You know, we have a GoGo satellite going up. Yeah, and um, obviously anybody on the Gulf Coast wants weather satellites up there to track hurricanes, storm formations. We also launch uh, science and robotic missions like the Mars rovers missions. We have a big one coming up in October that's going to Europa, which is the moon of oh, wow. Jupiter. Uh, yeah, so we, we launch all over the solar system, a lot of Earth-based satellites, but also uh, helio uh, missions as well as Mars and asteroids and Jupiter as well. Well, you know, speaking of the helio type uh, experiments, uh, can you speak on any type of missions that are being done during a solar eclipse? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I know that the solar eclipse is super special because you get a very unique look at the sun uh, when the moon does come into that path of the sun's light. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of heliophysicists that are going to be looking for, um, to look at the sun's corona or the at outer atmosphere of the sun, which you can only see during that uh, total solar eclipse. We also launched, we've launched Parker Solar Probe, um, which has gone as close to the sun as we possibly can, and we call it touching the sun. Um, so we, there's a lot of really cool and amazing science that uh, that NASA does for for the sun and for for all of the uh, planets. Okay, now you've left the comfort of New Orleans to head up toward Niagara Falls. You're on the uh, Canadian side, I believe, right? That's correct. Yeah, right behind me is Lake Ontario. Uh, we're in this wetlands area, and right across the uh, lake is Toronto. It's this blue haze back there. And um, at between Niagara, like south of Toronto, uh, to Niagara is also in totality on the Canadian side. Uh, so we're lucky to be up here and we're hoping that we get a little bit of clear uh, skies because right now it's a little bit cloudy but it looks like it's clearing up a little bit and um, hopefully we get a nice viewing here in a few minutes. Yeah, what I could see from the sky behind you, it looks like you got kind of a broken sky, so hoping, hoping that you get enough clearing right at totality. Exactly. But yeah, have, you, yeah. have, you, have, you ever, every, have you ever experienced totality? No, I have not. So this is gonna be a first for uh, myself and my family. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, it was a uh, it was a big endeavor to come up here, <laughs> and I know there was some some bad weather around Texas. I had some of my NASA friends are traveling all over the country. I have a friend in Indianapolis. I got friends in Austin. I got friends in Dallas. Everybody's trying to uh, view totality because the next one, as you probably know, is not going to happen until 2044, and that's that's going to be very small. And then 2045 is when we're going to get a a nice long one again. Coming from NASA, how childlike do all of these engineers and scientists become uh, for uh, the build up to and then during an eclipse? Uh, as my wife likes to say, we're all just a bunch of nerds. So, <laughs> that includes meteorologists, so we're in the same boat. Okay, good. <laughs> we're in the same. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so anytime there's any major launch, any, uh, you know, um, any comment or any close flyby of uh, of a uh, asteroid or something, we all get super pumped. Uh, lunar eclipses, solar eclipses, we love it all. Um, and that's, I think, anybody that works for NASA, you want them to have that passion for space. And that's something that we try to do with the younger generation by, you know, coming and talking to yourself or uh, going to schools and doing outreach events to talk to kids about space and science and technology and engineering and 
all the amazing things that are out there. Well, we're looking at a live picture from Indianapolis, and they have just now gone into totality. So uh, it is inching closer your way, and um, I'm hoping for those clear skies for you. What's a one thing or a, a one of many things that you and your family, which is exciting here, you have younger kids, or are they as excited as you are about this? Yeah, they they actually they were learning about it in school because they were starting to tell me, oh, yeah, I'm ready to I want to see the diamond ring or I want to see, uh, you know, like the uh, Corona of the sun and everything like that. So they were learning about it in school and they're super pumped as well. Uh, and I think that they're going to go back and tell all their friends at school that, yeah, we got a day off <laughs> and we got to see the uh, solar eclipse. I mean, what, how great of a learning experience is this in, in real time across so much of the United States for kids to, to experience it and then, you know, to see science firsthand, not in a textbook, not even on the internet, but to actually go out and see it. How big is that for, for you know, getting kids interested in STEM? Yeah, that, I think that it, what's amazing is that uh, now, it's more and more readily available. Um, you know, there's more and more teachers out there pushing for engineering, pushing for the STEM classes. Uh, the opportunity is there and the kids are really, really involved. Um, and also you see a very diverse uh, group of students that are crazy about space and love learning about it because it's really, really amazing to think. And when you think about our earth, and our Earth being the only place that we know of that can um, that can sustain life, and here we are on it, and we get to go out and look deeper into space to try and find other places that could possibly ho hold those building blocks of of life. Um, I think that that's truly amazing. And then when you bring that to the classrooms, the kids are just blown away, especially when you start talking about you know the uh, the massive size of space and the Milky Way and our solar system. And uh, we have some amazing uh, missions that we've launched, launched recently, like the James Webb Space Telescope, which helps us to look deeper and deeper into space and look actually further back in time. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's really a unique uh, opportunity to, um, to be a part of this right now and hopefully the next generation is super inspired and we're looking forward to uh, spreading the message about solar eclipses and luckily science and technology and engineering as well. Well we're at the peak in Indianapolis right now so it is inching closer to you so I want you to be able to go out and enjoy the rest of it. Lance thank you so much for joining us I appreciate it and uh, come back to New Orleans soon. Oh yeah thank you so much Chris. Thank Absolutely. you for having me. Thank you. All right, that was Lance Lunderman, an uh, um, engineer with NASA who actually is a rocket scientist, basically, with his family up in uh, Niagara in Canada to see the totality. And as we said, it's already at Indianapolis, so that's in central Indiana, mm -hmm. so it is nearing the Great Lakes. Uh, he, is on, he was on Lake Ontario, I believe, and so it's getting a little bit closer to the Canadian border, mm -hmm. and then eventually it'll pass through Maine, Vermont, Maine, and then uh, kind of the Canadian Maritimes before kind of entering the North Atlantic yeah. and then it's kind of, I think I believe it wraps up around there. Yeah, yeah. and after probably after they leave this Indianapolis shot, I bet they're gonna go to Cleveland next, which is uh, the totality happening in about four minutes. And so look, we'll you can see the sun. There's there that, it is, that diamond ring. Yep, yeah. there's the sun coming back out. So just that quick, and then those glasses yeah. didn't go back on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Erie, Pennsylvania, 218, that's yep. where it will be, so. It's moving. It's moving pretty quickly. We were talking about space weather earlier. <laughs> you had asked him that. <laughs> I think like, a direct result of space weather is the aurora borealis, right? Right. So right. that's one thing that we we could throw at you some more facts. Right. But no. <laughs> right. Yeah. And all coming kind of from those solar flares. You know, yes. those big bursts of energy that come from those spots um, right. on the, the sun's surface. And the coronal mass ejections. Yes. That, right. You know, and when they're directed toward Earth. Mm -hmm is when it can affect the, you know, the, the power grid, right, GPS, right. satellites. Yes. You know, there's right. always that fear of, you know, the stronger ones and what they can do. But that's also what triggers the northern and southern lights. And so they're gorgeous. Right. But yeah. with our reliance now on so much technology and space, it, it can become more of a hazard. So that's why these things, you, you had heard, you know, heliophysics, you might mm -hmm. hear that term uh, with regards to the solar eclipse. That's the scientists that study the sun. I mean, 
when you get into science, and this is something we, we tell schools uh, often, this is a great job as a meteorologist if you're interested in science because we tend to get to talk about all these different sciences, yeah. whether or not we know all about them, <laughs> such as that black hole question yes. I was given earlier. <laughs> we may not be able to touch on all of those things, but it does, it, it just opens up a wide range of fields that we, we get to, to discuss and then also get to learn from. We get to, to talk to these type of experts and astronomers and NASA engineers and heliophysicists that study the sun and, and all those type of folks that, uh, again, you have to be, and you heard Lance kind of say this, you kind of have to be excited to get into yeah. one of these science fields because it is more of a passion. We talk about the meteorology passion, but I guarantee you astronomers right now are very excited about this one. And um, Yeah, and speaking of learning, something I learned with this is that going into the future, there will apparently be more annular eclipses than total solar eclipses. Have you all heard this? Because no, no. the moon is inching farther away from the Earth, like oh. an inch per year. Oh, so it's not like in our <laughs> lifetime, I mean, we won't see any changes oh, really. Good. But eventually, you know, we will have more of those where the moon is a little farther out and it doesn't quite completely eclipse the sun. It's right in front of it, but you can still see the sun, you know, in a circle around it. So we locked um, out. Yeah. I guess, yeah, but I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't know the moon was really yeah, moving around. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Because at some point, we're not going to have any more total yeah. eclipses. Oh, God. <laughs> when? when? Not tomorrow, happen? but... But, yeah. <laughs> but we're talking millions in the distant years. future, though. It's not yeah. anytime soon. We're talking millions of years. Right. But that is interesting. That, and that, again, is probably something that can be probably calculated to a, a decent accuracy yes. at this point as you kind of figure, you know, how fast it's moving away and the sizes and the, the Yeah, orbit. I think I, I read after the year 3000, it's hard to predict because the Earth's rotation kind of fluctuates because of the tidal friction with the moon. Hmm. So can you, can you verify yeah. that? <laughs> Is it harder to predict after the year 3000 because of tidal friction with the Earth's rotation? It, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I read that somewhere. <laughs> Uh, possibly, that, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah, that would be something to ask one of the astronauts. But you know, space, um, speaking of space weather uh, early there, um, once the eclipse is over, people have these uh, solar, the, the, you know, eclipse viewers. Mm -hmm. Well, don't throw them away because you can still use them to view the sun on any day to see sunspots. Oh, cool. So oh. if you go to uh, like a website like um, uh, spaceweather.com, they give you daily updates, and when there's a large uh, sunspot, usually around three, um, three Earth sizes or so um, large, you can actually see it just with the viewer. Wow! And and with the active solar twenty, uh, solar cycle twenty-five that's going on now, you can actually see that more often now with, the, with a lot of sunspots just with the viewer. Well, that's good advice because, yeah, don't throw these away. These are actually right. useful for, yeah. for they don't a lot go of bad. other... Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's true. As long as they're kept in a safe place, you know, like in a little plastic bag or something, they don't get scratches on them. Yeah, save, yeah. These for, save these for the next eclipse and for other, you know, solar events that you can see and, you know, when you are, should not be looking at the sun ever, <laughs> but just if for something interesting like that, I believe we're looking at Cleveland now, so they are in totality, so uh, uh, just a few minutes ago past uh, Indianapolis, now in Cleveland, so it's uh, right at the Great Lakes, and so our friend Lance in Niagara will mm -hmm. be seeing it shortly. Wow. And hopefully he'll get enough clearing. Even if he doesn't and he's not able to see it, you're, you're still going to get that twilight um, glow uh, of the of the of the land um, as it passes over uh, Niagara and Canada. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Todd Danos on Twitter did send me a picture where. From New Orleans, you can see the eclipse. I mean, it's not like super impressive, but he found a tiny break in the clouds. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it here. You oh, can wow. see it on Twitter. And well, he found that one little he break. He found it. I'm very, you know, impressed. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have that, yeah. So, yeah, follow Alexandra's Twitter. It's a, uh, we're all now gathered around our computer yeah. looking at the yeah, yeah. crescent yeah. sun. There it it's is. like we haven't been looking at yeah. that all afternoon <laughs> long on, on air or on uh, our streaming. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, that's as good as it's going to get here. That yep. was, that was yeah. it. We've, it's, it's over for us. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a little moon almost the way it comes it through. But um, yeah. you know, I think I read that more total eclipses happen in the northern hemisphere. Did you read that? Did you see that? Yeah, I think it's because of the um, the lopsided elliptical orbit around the sun. That's 
that's why our oh. our lopsided elliptical orbit around the sun is why we get lucky in the northern hemisphere and see more total eclipses. Interesting. And of course, there's a lot more land and you know yes. more people in the northern hemisphere True. anyway. So um, a lot of people you know able to see it more than the southern. So that's convenient. I'll have yeah. to I'll have to share this on social media in a moment. My sister-in-law from Austin sent me a picture of the the the, the diamond ring oh. effect. Beautiful. I mean, it's something we've oh, seen, wow. but I think it's it's just something oh, else to oh see experienced yeah. by someone. And <laughs> she actually, I, I thanked her on, uh, I texted her and thanked her, and she goes, I'm sorry, I, I completely zoned out. I was so <laughs> enthralled by what was happening, I forgot we were on air. And I said, no, that was the best part. It was yeah. the, great to hear your, you know, genuine reaction to it going dark like that. And, and she said, yeah, we've been talking about, you know, they've been, obviously, the folks uh, on Air in Austin have been talking about it, but she didn't really know what to expect until it was happening. Yeah, and very kind of her to share the time with us. Right, yes. exactly. She's yes. watching it out in the parking lot with everyone else in her <laughs> complex. And, but it's interesting how they handled it. It was almost like an evacuation of if you can work at home, stay at home, yeah. schools are canceled, UT was closed, advising people to stay off the roadways. <laughs> You know, yes. I guess it was just something, and, and you know, I guess to be honest, if you're driving and you think it's happening, you may be more inclined to try and glance up yeah, and not true. pay any attention to the road. So, yeah, and the I guess there's that. A, a states of emergency. You know, looking for at the yeah. solar people. corona here, uh, many people don't realize you're looking at the hottest part of the sun. That's the solar corona. Oh. No, it's over a million degrees, and and so uh, NASA has a the. Parker Solar Probe that's touching the sun right now, trying to study, you know, get answers for why, why that is, why, it's got to do with magnetic field lines, yeah. but they're trying to find out more information on why the solar corona is hotter than the surface of the, than the, of no the sun. No kidding. Yeah, that's, that's So you say it, it's quote unquote touching the sun, how close is it it's, uh, to getting kind of accurate data? It's, I don't know the exact distance, but it, it's it's the closest any spacecraft has ever gotten to no the kidding. sun, and and it's specially made to do so. So all the instruments are actually staying cool on the other side of like a giant shield. Mm -hmm. No kidding. There's like a big shield, and and it's made out of certain material, and and it's actually going to get closer and closer over the next few years. Really? So right now it's at as close as it's ever, any, any man-made craft's ever been. It's going to get closer and closer until it makes its closest within, I forget, you know, within the next few years. I don't know if a lot of folks realize that we had a, a space probe near yeah, the, the sun. Yeah, the Parker Solar Probe. That is really interesting. It was interesting. launched about two or three years ago. Okay, and I'm mm -hmm. sure our friend Lance probably was involved with oh. that. It sounds like he, was, yeah. he does a lot of those. Yeah. All right, now this shot is from New York, so making our way off to the northeast and looks like it's almost at totality there. I know Buffalo uh, starts at 2.18, so right around now for uh, totality there. So happening in New York now. I was trying to get a picture from my family in New Jersey. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, but they're not, their camera, I probably, I would imagine they're taking it without the protective lenses, which is not advised. Don't no. do that. Right. They're probably taking it just to, without anything to protect their phones. But it just, the picture doesn't look so good. They also only have about 80% coverage so of about, the sun about there. about like us? About exactly okay. like us. But they luckily have mostly sunny skies uh, today, so they can actually see it. Yeah, that's cool. But I wish I had a better picture to show. Yeah, and they say part of the reason for not using your phone is because it's it's higher in the sky than we normally would take a picture, like at sunset or sunrise, you know, where it looks so pretty. Mm -hmm. But you also have a lot more of Earth's atmosphere to kind of look through, so that's not as bad for your phone, you know, as just pointing it straight up at the top of the sky. Uh, yeah, true. Um, but yeah, a lot of people do it. I know I've actually done that before to take pictures of like sun halos and mm -hmm. rings that's around true, the yeah. sun yeah. and things like that. Uh, maybe I have an old phone that isn't affected <laughs> as much or something. Well, or it may be enough of a, a filtering of the high clouds that it's not, you know, that it's not as direct on your phone. Right, just just like pointing or it up at a, a clear sky. And maybe if you, you know, do it quick enough, then it's not so bad. But, <laughs> yeah. No. Maybe maybe you won't try that next time. Yeah, yeah. Just exactly. use Alexander's old phone for all your sun pictures. <laughs> it did fine with the sun he was. <laughs> I think it's been pretty neat. I'm, I'm also looking back at our. I've been want to pop up Max Two again. I've been kind of kind of watching on a wider loop of the uh, United States, of uh, the the shadow passing across the nation, and just how fast. I believe this loop may be well since this morning, but uh, just how quickly that shadow moves across the. Uh, the sky, which is really neat. 
Actually, I think we got another person on Facebook, on our WWL Facebook, also saw it between the clouds down the bayou today. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So. I'm glad some folks got to see it. We've been talking about it for a few weeks now. Yeah. And, and once we started to get that idea of we would be under mostly cloudy skies, it wasn't looking as promising here. but. Yeah. And also just looking at our temperature, just before 1 p.m. we were at 76, and then uh, just before 2, so at the maximum we were at 74. So our temperature Ooh. went down 2 degrees just from that, um, you know, obscuration of the sun. So wow. interesting to see. Not as much as in totality where I saw it could be anywhere from 5 to maybe they were thinking 10 or 15 degrees maybe. I'm sure with an area of low humidity it would yeah. be more uh -huh. substantial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sure you, we got 2 degrees. You get, well, that's yeah. about all we can expect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, I mean, you cut down that for 2 minutes, 4 minutes, however long it lasts, that um, you know, incoming solar mm -hmm. radiation. Mm -hmm. It would affect the temperature and with low humidity it would probably be more responsive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Yeah. I know earlier we were uh, teasing possible jeopardy, but I guess we ran out of time for that. I think we're going to do trivia. For our trivia questions. Oh, man. Were you looking forward to being on the spot? Oh, <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> you buzzer? Hey, look, I was yeah. the one on the spot with some of those student questions that <laughs> I, I thought we had answers for, but uh, apparently someone in the newsroom thought, uh, <laughs> those are tough. Right. So thought I would have it. Uh, I mean, those are some difficult questions. Okay. I haven't thought about that stuff since I since I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, you so, know, with that, yeah, but we're great. talking about kids and, and being a great learning experience. Mm -hmm. It just shows you how inquisitive they are. And I know all mm -hmm. of us have done countless school talks. There are certain ages that they are just really curious about science, and they will have the sometimes wildest questions that are very valid that we maybe have not even thought about. Yeah, they're genius questions. All right, coming up is something from uh, Twitter. We're about to see an image. Let's it, see. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. Is that from the Weather Service? That's so funny. So uh, I believe the Weather Service may be um, <laughs> apologizing for the cloudy skies. You know, people blame us for the weather. It really goes back to the Weather Service. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it maybe it has to do with the fact that they moved the radar. Mm. <laughs> maybe if we had not moved the radar, we've been under sunny skies. So, uh, is it Hammond's fault? <laughs> it might be Hammond's fault. Is that here? No, that's not here. Is that here? No, that can't be. Oh, oh Niagara. Niagara. Okay. Well, they're kind of dealing with the cloud cover too. I don't yeah. know if that was here earlier. Maybe we got a little bit of a break in the clouds, but. I was looking through some of the cloud level forecast through the afternoon and if we had just been high clouds we would have been okay because that actually would have acted as a filter mm -hmm. but as soon as I saw the low cloud forecast we started getting showers thunderstorms on radar I, I knew it was going to be a, a bit harder to get that. Yeah that was disappointing to see but um, the next one again 2025. Yes. <laughs> now, um, okay now what, what are the next ones that are closer of totality to us? For us it's 20 there is one in 2044 but that's just a part of Montana and into Canada so that one will be total. Yeah I'm not going there. Yeah mm -hmm. tiny bit of uh, just the U.S. covered with that one. The real next one is 2045 for the total solar eclipse. That one will go from places like Colorado Springs over Arkansas. That one will hit Jackson, Mississippi, and then on toward Destin, Orlando, and Miami. And then if you can wait a little longer to 52, that's the one where it's going to be pr pretty close to us. Grand Isle, Leeville, New Orleans will actually be like 99% totality. Wow. So I think you need the 100 to get all of those effects, you know, but it'll be really close, very much more dramatic, I think. And then that one also hits Pensacola, Destin, and then eventually Savannah, Georgia. And in 20... 78, it's right over New Orleans. However, if you want to get into eclipses, uh, not of the solar kind, but lunar eclipses, we have one less than a year from now. That one will be March 14th, 2025, a total lunar eclipse in New Orleans, and also the following year in 2026. So two total lunar eclipses, but of course the solar is, you know. A, a little more impressive. Very impressive <laughs> in, in that path, especially of totality, of course. So this is in somewhere upstate New York, Tupper Lake, so kind of the Finger Lakes region, I would imagine, that totality now. So just amazing how just within our broadcast here, we've gone from it in Mexico yes. to now upstate New York and shortly kind of exiting the um, northeast. And David was nice enough to bring us eclipse glasses. However, yeah, they we're are not needed. definitely not, we're not needed today. <laughs> for some people. But yeah. thank you for staying with us. Thank that was a, a, all great information. Yeah, I appreciate it, David. All right, we're so, going to yeah, kind of wrap things up <laughs> no, here. Or, uh, 
I know. You it's know, we had idea. big plans for this uh, show. Had we had sunny skies, we'd be able to at least see it again at 80%. Mm -hmm. Not quite totality, but hopefully that got a lot of uh, folks uh, more interested in astronomy and science. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> the pro can the, the producer, producer just do this for us? <laughs> can you just tell us we're going to have a whole lot more on our YouTube channel, social yeah. media, as well as this will be uh, constantly broadcast on our streaming service, WWL Plus. Mm -hmm.